On this week's program, it's another Ag in the Courtroom with Dr. Roger McCohen from the Washburn School of Law. You need to make sure your intentions are known and understood. If you create a trust, we also have features for Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, and weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau. A grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919. KFB.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission. Lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. In agricultural news from agview.net, the U.S. agriculture producers became more optimistic again in September. The Purdue University CME Group Ag Economic Barometer climbed to 156. That is the highest reading for the index since the pandemic began last winter, 12 points higher than a month ago. Since July, the index is up 38 points and is 60 points higher than its 2020 low that was established back in April. Organizers say USDA's announcement of the second round of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program payments to producers and an ongoing rally in fall crop prices likely to be the two primary drivers behind the improvement. Farmers also more optimistic about making investments in their farming operation and about the short-run outlook for farmland values as they were in August. Well, despite what has been a slower agricultural land market the last few years, the dollar amount of land that Farmers National Company is selling for its clients is near record levels. They say as of October 1st, the company and its agents say active marketing and selling of land worth over $3,300 million. The land being marketed includes some good quality tillable crop land of all sizes, some recreational land, ranches, pasture land, timber land, rural homes, acreages, even transitional land near urban areas. Now, the amount of land for sale varies by region and broker. Some areas continue to have less for sale than normal, and others are seeing a slight uptick in the amount of land that's listed for sale. Now, landowners have been continuing to make decisions on whether to sell now in early 2021 or even hold on to the land. There's also been a reported increase in farmland interest by investment firms that are seeking long-term and stable investment options. More on these and other Ag News stories at agview.net. Stay with us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com.
Hi, I'm Emily Cope with the Kansas Corn Growers Association Corn Commission, and I am the Market Development Coordinator, but I also get to work on our collegiate programs and just wanted to give an update about our newly released application for our scholarship program and Collegiate Academy. Uh, we're very excited to launch this again for the fourth year here at Kansas Corn, so our growers believe in uh, supporting uh, students going to school. You know, they're our future, uh, they will be our future farmers, our future industry leaders, and so we do have a scholarship program. Our scholarships are all online. The information can be found at kscorn.com backslash collegiate. Um, and it's open to any student who is a sophomore level or above attending a post-secondary school. So that could be a college, a technical school, or even a university. So we encourage students um, to apply and take advantage of this opportunity to be supported by our farmers who want to support the future of agriculture there. A second opportunity outside of our scholarship program is our Collegiate Academy program. Uh, so this is open again to all students in post-secondary education, freshmen through senior. Uh, and then this is a great opportunity for you to network with different industry professionals across the state. Uh, we take you on tours through different sessions throughout the state, learning about you know, agriculture and farming, meeting uh, our farmers across the state, learning about their sustainability initiatives, and then going all the way to the demand side of things. So learning about ethanol, learning about trade in the state of Kansas. And then of course, a big focus of ours is policy uh, with the Corn Growers Association. So visiting Topeka, and then of course, a trip to Washington DC uh, for our annual Corn Congress. So definitely encourage any college students you know to take advantage of this opportunity. All the information can be found on our website at kscorn.com. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Well, joining us now for another round of Ag in the Courtroom is uh, Roger McCohen, who is a uh, Ag Law professor and uh, tax specialist at the Washburn University, the uh, Farm Bureau uh, uh, Ag Law specialist there at the uh, Washburn School of Law. Uh, Dr. McCohen, I think the topic that we're going to talk about is one that probably is being discussed around a lot of, of uh, dinner tables as uh, this time of the year, a lot of folks think about okay, moving on to the next year. Uh, is this the year we do a generational change or uh, do we have uh, an event happen that we need to uh, change some things on the farm? And, and uh, you did a, a kind of a case study or, or looked at uh, uh, something that has implications that happened right here in Kansas. Yeah, it was a recent opinion of the Kansas Court of Appeals uh, just a few days ago, Ken, and it really is an eye opener, I think, uh, at least I hope. Uh, for a lot of people that might read the article on my blog that I wrote uh, and, and posted just a, shortly after the opinion came out. Um, and it really, I think, kind of highlights the issue uh, that faces a lot of farm families, and that is uh, you've got the, the surviving spouse that remains and now has passed away. So the second of mom and dad to die has now died. And the estate plan at that point in time really kicks in. And it was the classic situation where mom, who is the surviving spouse, has five children and only one is going to be the farmer. And the others are not to get the farm ground or the cattle or the, or the machine or equipment. Uh, but what, what she did was rather interesting in draft estate plans that work with clients and work with farm ranch clients 
um, to be careful in what we do, that we want to make sure that clients understand what the language is that's placed in a trust. If the client wants to trust and we create a trust for a client, then make sure that that really is what the client wants, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, information that's out there and clients can go to various seminars. They might be put up at a hotel and they'll get a, a mailer on it and say, well, here's a trust seminar. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, generational planning, come see us. And, and what it is are groups that specifically promote trust. So the clients think this is a good idea and they tell the attorney, I need a trust. And the attorney may not question that and not really dig deeper and say, okay, I can create a trust for you. And there you go, just pull it off the shelf. Uh, and the client really doesn't understand how it works. I even saw one early in my practice career uh, in North Platte, Nebraska, where the client had, had gone to uh, a rather substantial client of the firm, uh, had gone to one of these uh, trust seminars at a, at a local hotel and came in and he brought in, he was real proud. He had this three ring binder. It was leather, had his name emblazoned in gold on the lower right hand corner. Uh, and the lead partner in the firm who was you know, recognized nationally for his work with farmers and ranchers on estate planning. And I worked directly under him. Uh, it was his long, long-term client. And uh, as soon as the client left, uh, <laughs> the lead attorney came up to me and said, here, uh, take this. Uh, he never, he paid thousands, several thousands of dollars. And this was 30 years ago uh, for this trust. And there's nothing in it. Nothing was funded. Uh, there was never any property transferred to the trust. So that told me, uh, and, oh, and by the way, he said, you can't bill for this, <laughs> which was uh, a bit irritating, but we had to do that for the client to clean up a mess that somebody else had created. Uh, but the client didn't understand what that document did or did, wouldn't do for him. It, it, he didn't, didn't question. He got a boilerplate trust. And I basically had to redo the whole thing. Well, that kind of came back in my memory reading this case of last Friday, which turned out to be an absolute family disaster and still is. It's going to go back to the trial court on remand to figure out the damages. But it points out to me that we have to be real careful. We can't just pull stuff off the shelf, get the client to sign it. That ah, we're done. You got to trust. Well, no, we've got to dig deeper into the facts. Uh, we've got to make sure the client that 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 that's the most appropriate thing for the client. And then make sure whatever we do that the client has a general understanding of how it works and that comports with their wishes. Uh, and that's the that's the practice and that's the counseling part of practice that um, uh, we want to make sure that we don't uh, skip out on. We're talking with Dr. Roger McCohen from the Washburn School of Law. Let's take a break. We'll talk more about uh, this interesting topic in just a moment. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made, roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. And this week, it's uh, Ag in the Courtroom began with Dr. Roger McCon from the Washburn School of Law, and we're talking about a uh, recent case in the Kansas Court of Appeals uh, dealing with uh, a farm family situation. So uh, what about some specifics and uh, what can people learn from this? Well, what happened in this one, Ken, is, as I said earlier, I, 
in, in our discussion that mom had five kids and one was to be the farmer to inherit the farmland and the other, the other children were not to have any part of ownership of the farmland or the cattle uh, or the farm machinery. And what mom owned were farmland, farm machinery and equipment, cattle, and a bunch of oil and gas interests. This is out in North uh, Central slash Northwestern Kansas. Uh, so there's a lot of oil and gas leases um, and mom had those interests, but everything was put into a trust. It was called a discretion. It, it had discretionary language in it. And the farm son was named as trustee. And that what we mean by discretionary trust is that the trustee has complete discretion over disbursements of trust income and assets. And really the beneficiaries aren't entitled to a distribution unless the trustee uh, gives them one. Well, the, Mom deeded the land, uh, half of the land to the one son that, that was the farm son and half the land to half interest to another son. And then he deeds his interest to his farming brother. So the, the son that was to inherit the farmland ends up getting all the farmland. He owns it outright, but it's got a bunch of debt on it. So what he did was he said, well, I'm the trustee of this trust. I have full discretion over the trust income and assets. So I will just dip into the trust and take a million three out and pay the debt off on the farmland that I own individually. Uh, saying that since I have full discretion, I can do that. Well, the answer is no, you cannot. Even as a trustee of a fully discretionary trust, you have fiduciary duties as trustee to the beneficiaries. Uh, even though you are a beneficiary, you have to be loyal and impartial and administer that trust in a prudent manner. And that's it. That's Kansas trust law. That's in Kansas code. And you can't override those responsibilities by putting language in a trust document that would wipe those out. You, you can't do that. And even though the trial court judge said, yeah, you can, uh, that's incorrect. The court of appeals unanimously overturned that and said, uh, trial court judge, you're going to have to figure out how to put this back together. And that's going to be a tough one uh, because he's already spent the funds to pay the debt down on the land, claiming that his bankers told him he could do that. Accountants told him he could do that. But it comes back to my initial point. Ken, and that is um, apparently at the, at the drafting stage of this, the client wasn't educated as to what that language meant. And I fear it was one of these situations that I don't know, but my suspicion is it was client said, I need to trust. Okay. Uh, what do you, what do you really want to do, mom? Well, she explains in general terms. So boom, here's your trust signed here with no discussion with the trustee as to what the language meant. Mom wasn't informed clearly. And then you, now you've got a mess and you've got family members suing family members and it, you just have a total disaster. And so we want to avoid that as practitioners representing clients. So Roger, if folks can learn more about this, read your blog on, uh, you go into great detail of, of, of what went on, what happened, some of those implications, because maybe those conversations uh, somewhat like this are taking place right now. So where can they find yeah. that? Uh, this is, if they go to Washburn Walter uh, on the web, so just W-A-L-T-R, it's Washburn Agricultural Law and Tax Report, so there's no E in that. And then uh, open to the homepage, and then down the left-hand side, you'll see a link to the uh, Ag Law, uh, Agricultural Law and Taxation blog. Click on that, and it's my article of October 5. Okay, uh, Roger, always good to uh, catch up, and we'll look forward to seeing what uh, happens through the courts or through other action uh, next month when we talk to you. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Dr. Roger McCohen, who is the uh, Ag Law Professor and the Tax Law Specialist at the Washburn School of Law, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff, like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story, and we'd love to have you. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org.
Launched in November of 2017, eatwheat.org is a website that features stories of American wheat farmers. Along with farmer stories, there are also recipe pages, a learn section focused on everything from different types of flour to gene editing, and a get inspired section with creative and fun activities for all ages. Since the launch of the website, traffic has steadily risen to 17,000 visitors per month. Website traffic mainly comes from Pinterest, where people search for recipes and find our site and learn more about farmers and their livelihood. Due to quarantine in late March and early April, the number of visitors increased, peaking at the end of April with more than 45,000 monthly viewers. Since the end of the peak, traffic has dropped down to 34,000 per month, which is still double from before quarantine. To engage with our audience, we developed two limited supply subscription boxes, one with baking activities, the other with crafting activities, to send to this audience for free as a way to spend a fun afternoon with their family, all the while creating a connection with Kansas wheat and wheat farmers. In order to promote these boxes, we collaborated with Instagram micro-influencers who could authentically promote the boxes within their typical content. The boxes were all requested within hours of the promotion, and other interested consumers were able to download the activities and use their own supplies to bake wheat foods and create craft projects. Visit wheatstatecrate.com to download these activities and enjoy them with your own family. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Access to high-speed broadband services creates new jobs, expands markets for new and existing businesses. I own several different businesses besides, uh, you know, working at Foster Dairy. Uh, one of those is an import business where I, I communicate every day with my manufacturer in Turkey. And so uh, it is extremely important for that viability of that business, that communication, that I have good quality internet um, because, you know, we are, we are doing business across the world. I would uh, be at a loss or at a disadvantage if I did not have uh, good quality internet for me to get my products out or for me to be able to communicate with my counterparts on the other side of the world. Learn more at kfb.org slash connecting Kansas. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. These days, no one can afford to take the risk of being without financial protection against high health care costs. Not even for a few days. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans offer short-term health care coverage to fill in those temporary gaps. Short-term health plans can provide you with medical coverage when you are between health plans, helping lower your potential financial risk. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you.
The Kansas Beef Council recently debuted a new video that promotes beef as the go-to protein source to fuel student success. The new campaign is part of the One Simple Ingredient promotion that highlights the positive nutritional attributes of beef and one key area where alternatives cannot compete, and that is that beef has just one ingredient, beef. The commercial will target millennial parents in Kansas and the Kansas City metro area using a variety of social media and digital streaming services. In addition to 15-second and 30-second videos, consumers will be directed to kansasbeef.org for information on beef nutrition and simple beef recipes that are tailored to student-athletes. The previous campaign, launched in January of this year, has been seen more than two million times. The One Simple Ingredient campaign is just one part of larger demand building programs conducted by the Kansas Beef Council. For example, KBC sponsors STEM classroom breakout boxes that educate students and teachers about the beef life cycle and how beef can be part of a healthy and sustainable diet. To see the new campaign, visit kansasbeef.org. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. Good morning. I am Mitch Dewar with Pinion, a division of KCO Isom. Producers all across the Midwest are in full force harvesting. Crop progress reports show harvest is progressing much faster than last year. As of October 4th, corn harvest was pegged at 25% complete, 9% ahead of last year, and soybeans sit at 38% harvested, 26% ahead of last year. Along with the quick harvest, farmers are also finding themselves with higher prices. Grains have had a huge rally since the 1st of August and were able to push to new highs for the move off of the September 30th grain stocks report published by the USDA. With U.S. quarterly corn stocks as of September 1st coming in below 2 billion bushel and under the average trade guess of 2.25 billion bushels, things look more optimistic for the corn market moving forward. The funds continue to add to their large net long position in the grain sector. Their position will be a key component to watch for the month to come. As producers are rewarded with more attractive grain prices, they still find themselves with the difficult decision of when to sell their grain. There's a lot going on in our world today, and as we have seen in the past, things can come and go within days. If you are worried about the volatile grain market and need help moving forward, give us a call at 888-452-8751. I'm Mitch Dewar with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Well, thank you for joining us. If you have questions or comments, even some suggestions, email me, Ken, at agview.net. Have a safe harvest. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ag. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. 
Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.